Hello, Year 6, and welcome to your maths lesson. Make sure you, in front of you you have got a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, as always, and then we're going to crack on with your maths lesson for today. Um, well done for all of you that have been sending me your work so far. I've got so much work from all of you. I'm really, really impressed with it. Keep it going. If you've not been emailing me every day, if you can try and keep all the work together and then uh, bring it in on Monday, I'll have a look through it and just see where you're at and what maybe you need a bit of extra support with when we get back to school. So do make sure you're keeping all this work because you're working so hard. I don't want it all to go um, to waste. So make sure you are keeping it all safe and we'll um, have a look at it when we get back in school if you've not been emailing it. Um, fantastic. OK, so we've got fluency as always first. Um, we've done some of these questions before. You put in the numbers in order from smallest to largest and let's crack on. So when you're ready, pause this video and have a go at your fluency and then we will move on to the answers. OK, off you go. OK, then uh, we're going to go through the answers now. So I'll put the answers on in five, four, three, two, one. OK, right. Fluency is on the board. Let's now do the answers. The first one, we should have got twenty uh, three thousand. Then we should have got this order for number two, number three, number four number five okay so pause this if you've not got a chance yet and let's get those answers marked again i like to see how you're kind of getting on in your fluency okay let's move on to your lesson so today we're kind of doing a little bit of a recap of something we've already covered so we had a look at fractions on a number line um earlier on this week but we're going to go over it a little bit again because i know that from some of you that sent me the working and also from some of the children that were at school um, we found this a bit tricky so we're going to go over it again and um, just as a bit of revision so we'll go through it all together and then you can get on with your work so what is an interval so what is an interval write down in your piece of paper what you think an interval is okay it's a part or section of something. So an interval is a part or a section of something. So for example, you can split a number line into intervals and divide it into different amounts. We represent the different amounts as fractions. So an interval is sort of the space between, is how many parts you split your number line into. The number of parts it's split into is becomes your denominator. So like anything like a, a bar model, the amount of pieces you split into it, it becomes then a fraction of that because you've got the whole and then you've got intervals, which is the parts that make the whole, okay? So you've got parts that make the whole. So here you've got a number line and it goes to one. Now you can see here where the lines are, these show as the intervals. So we've got one, we've got these lines here. So the parts that make our whole here, we've got one part here, two, three, four. So it's been split into four equal parts. So when we're thinking about fractions, it's been split into four equal parts. What is my denominator? Four. Well done. So it's four. So we're splitting it into quarters. So let's have a go now. We're going to put these fractions in the correct place. Oh, yeah, that's good, isn't it? And they drag all together. So let's start nice and easy. We've got a quarter there. Well, a quarter is going to be the first one. So it's going to go there. So that's our first part, because at the end of the first part, then we've got two quarters which is going to go here. And then we've got our three quarters, which is going to go here. This one is already one, which is, of course, the same as four over four. So it's a full fraction. It's the same as saying four quarters here. OK, so it says here, can you simplify two quarters? So can we simplify it? Well, yes, we can. So if you look at both of them, they've both got um, a factor, the common factor that is two. So we can divide both of them by two. Um, it's easier for me to write it because I haven't got a division sign. I think I need to change this from brown. Let's make it smaller and let's make it a nicer colour. Right, so divide it by two. So my fraction, that is the worst two I have ever drawn. Two divided by two is, of course, one. Four divided by two is, of course, two. So it's a half. So we've simplified that fraction of two quarters down to a half. Right. What would the intervals be if the number line was divided into eights? So we've got a number line here that's been split into eight parts. So eight parts are making up my whole number line. So we've got eight parts. So look, we've got one part, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. So now we need to number my number, my um, fractions on my number line. So we start off with, of course, got 
one. I'm going to change it to red so it's a bit more obvious and we'll take the ball. The second one is of course going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so then we've done all of our eights into our number line. And it says then at the bottom, can you simplify the one in the middle? So can you simplify um, the one in the middle? So if you simplify four eights here, kind of cheated and looked ahead then. If we simplify four eights, we can divide both of them by four. So we divide both by four. Terrible writing, Miss Farrow. We have then become, it becomes one half. Let's see if we're right. So it becomes one half, so which is the same as two quarters or one half. So we found the same way. Okay, it's halfway up our, in our number line. It's half of the parts, so it's a half. Right. When the fraction you are trying to place has a denominator that is different to the number of intervals of the number, you need to make it the same, usually by simplifying so sometimes sometimes we do not have the same denominator as there is parts and in that case we need to try and simplify or change the denominator to make it equal to make it the same so it's easier to place it so let's have a look at this one this one we've got a quarter a half and three quarters ah now let's let's look at how many parts make up our whole number line. So how many parts have we got on our number line? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our number line is going up in apes. Now we've got an issue because our fractions are not in apes. We've got in quarters and we've got um, the denominator of two. So we need to change it so our denominators are all the same, just like you have done before. So what do we do to four to make the denominator? of eight. What do you do to four to make the denominator of eight? Well, we times it by two, don't we? So four times by two is eight. So therefore let's do the same to the numerator, times that one by two. Uh, one times by two is two. So that fraction becomes two eighths. Now, what do we do to two to make the denominator of eight? So to get from two to eight, what do you times by? You times by four. So therefore we need to do the numerator and we need to multiply that by four. We always do the same. Um, so one times by four is four, so that becomes four eighths. This one here is three quarters. We need to make it into the denominator of eight. So if we're making it into eight, we need two times by two, as we've already done with the quarter. So we times that by two, times the numerator by two, because whatever you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator. Three times by two is six, so that becomes six eighths. So now we need to look at where we're going to put these fractions. So now we need to look. So we've got, this is two eighths, so that's one two. So the fraction of a quarter, which is equivalent to two eighths, would go on this line here. So here, we're going to write our quarter. Um, or you could write two eighths, both would be right, they're equivalent fractions. But I always like to get into the habit of um, putting on the, the original ones rather than the, the ones we've just changed. Let's look at the second one. We've got half, which is the same as um, four eighths. So one, two, three, four. So half is here. So that is four eighths, which is equivalent to a half. Okay, let's look at the last one. So the last one we've got is um, three quarters, um, which became six eighths. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one here would be six because that's the sixth part. And um, sorry, let's do the original one, which was three quarters, same as six eighths. There we go. Okay. So which one did you think was easiest to do? A half, a half is always easier because it's easier to work out. Um, we've And we've done this, we've simp we already simplified them. So we put six eighths on, didn't we? And we put it as three quarters. Okay, let's move on. Right, so this is the same thing again. You've got one eighth, three eighths and five eighths and you need to put them on the number line. First thing we're gonna check is how many parts are making my whole number line. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're in eights. So putting these three on the number line should be really simple. You can have a pause of this video and decide where they're going to go. 
Okay, I'm going to show you now. So the first one is one eighth, which is of course going to go on the first one. So it becomes here, one eighth, uh, because it's the first part. Then we have got the three eighths, so that's one, two, three eighths. So three eighths would be here. Um, okay. And then let's look at five eighths. Then we've got three, four, five eighths. Okay, good. So then it says, where would 10 sixteens go? Now we don't have 16 pieces. Our whole is only split into eights. So we need to do something to this fraction to be able to work it out. So it says, what could you simplify it to? So we need to know factors of 10 and factors of 16. So factors of 10, well, you've got two, oh, you've got two, not three, not four, um, five, um, six, no, Seven, no, eight, no, nine, no, ten. Yeah. Okay, so then what have we got for this one? Factors of 16, well, we've got two, three, nope, four, yep, yeah. four and four, uh, five, no, six, no, seven, no, eight, yep, yeah. um, nine, no, ten, nope. 11. Okay, so we'll leave it as that. So we've kind of got up to these, so we've worked out the factors. So if we're going to divide both of these, and uh, the one that's in both of them is 2, so we're just going to have to divide them both by 2. So it's not a takeaway, I'm going to put the dots on. <laughs> so we're going to divide both by 2. So if you do 16 divided by 2, you get 8. And if you do 10 divided by 2, you get 5. So we need to put five eighths on, which is what will go here. So 10 sixteenths is equivalent to five eighths. So you'd write 10 sixteenths here. Okay, right, that's that one done. So now we've got a go at this one. So can you pause the video and have a go at putting these ones on? Check the how many parts are making up my whole of one uh, and then work out where you're going to put them and then look at what you can do to 924 to be able to put it on to this. Off you go. Okay, so if you checked how many parts make up my whole, we've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight again. We've got the first fraction, which is one eighth, which is just gonna go here. We've got three eighths, which is gonna go one, two, three, and then you've got five eighths, four, five eighths. Okay, then this is where would nine twenty fours go? So the first thing you need to do is work out the factors of a nine. So what do we multiply together to make nine? Well, we've also got, we've got one and nine, and then we've got three and three. Okay, then we've got eight factors of eight. Ignore that, it should be factors of 24. We've got um, one and 24, we've got, two and um 12 we've got three and eight and we've got um four and six so we need to think of which is a common one we need to make it so that the denominator is going to be eight so what can we do to make the denominator eight we need to think how can we make the 24 into a, a denominator of eight well what can we divide that by so if we divide 24 and we divide it by three we would get eight. So 24 divided by three gives me eight, which is what we need because we need the denominator to be of eight. And then the numerator would be nine divided by three, which is going to give me three. So it becomes three eighths. So three eighths would be here. So that's the same one. So it's nine over 24 so would go there. And then we probably should put our lines in all our fractions. It's hard when you're typing them. Do, do, do. 9 over 24 is 1 eighth. Okay, hopefully this is making a little bit more sense to you today. Okay, when the fraction you are trying to place has a denominator that is smaller to number of intervals on the number line, you need to make the denominator the same by multiplying. So if it's smaller, you multiply it to make it the same. If it's larger, you divide it to make sure it's the same as the other denominators. Um, so that it's the same as the amount of intervals. So here, you can see it's a little bit different. So how many intervals have we got here? We've got how many parts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we've got 16. I'm just going to write 16. I don't have to count again if I forget. 16 there. So how many intervals are there? Oh, there's a question there. 16. So what would the easiest denominator to use? 16. Use the same as the amount of intervals. So it says, how would you put two quarters on the same number line? Right. So if we're going to put two quarters as on this number line, our denominator is going to have to be 16 because that's how many intervals we've got. So we need to make that denominator into 16. So if we've got two quarters and we're trying to make it so the denominator is 16. So we have to think very carefully about what do you do to four? What do you do to four to make 16? What do you do to four? Well, if you said you times by four, you're correct. So we need to do the same to the numerator, times by four. Two times by four is eight. So it becomes eight over 16, which is going to be half anyway. Let's see if I can drag this to make my life a little bit easier. Oh, yes. So eight. So we've got, that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight sixteenths would go there. Okay. Right. OK, three. How would you put three quarters on the same number line? So we need to put three quarters on this number line. So remembering it's the same number line, which means the denominator is being added into 16. So we have to think, what do we need to do now to make the denominator of 16? Well, we did it on the previous to get from four to 16. You times by four. You must do the same to the numerator. So three times by four gives me 12. So that becomes 12 over 16. So then we need to count up to 12 to be able to do this. Okay, so we've put 12 16s in the correct place. We counted up to 12 intervals and we placed that in. Now it says, can you do the same for half? So we need to now change these. You can pause this video and have a go at it on your own. And then I will go through it in a second. So pause it now and I'm going to go for it in five, four, three, two. So we're making this into 16. So how do we make two into 16? Well, we times it by eight. So therefore we need to do one times by eight, which gives me eight. So that should give me eight sixteen. So this fraction here needs to be on the eighth one. So let's have a go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to go there. Let's look at the second one, which was two eights. We're trying to make it into sixteen. So what do we do? Two eight to make sixteen. Well, we times it by two. So we need to times. I, I wrote two there instead of eight. Times by eight. This one here is going to be times by two. Two times by two is four. So it's going to become four over 16. So we need to look for the fourth interval and put that in the right place. So where would that one go? So we've got one, two, three, four, four sixteen, which is going to go there. And then we've got three eights here. Again, we're going to times by two. So it becomes 16. Three times by two is, of course, uh, six so it's become six sixteenths six sixteenths where would that be well, let's count up to our sixth interval so we've got that's four there we already know five six so it's going to go here okay so we've done this one now honestly i think you'll be okay with this question it's just that there's a few different bits put together and um, because you're having to convert the fractions into equivalent fractions first that's the only difference really it's just Keep going with it and you'll, you'll be fine. Your work is here. It is on the school website. Um, have a go at it and then email me how you've got on. If you get stuck on anything, send me an email and I'll try and help you over email best I can. But if not, I will we'll sort it out on Monday when we get back to school. Okay, well done for your lesson today. Uh, thank you very much for listening and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.